if I see and I personally um, sit in front of the TV and I see wildlife series or whatever, and it's just running smoothly, smoothly, smoothly. And most of those people don't even know what is behind the scene. Okay, who's taking the stopwatch? Thermometer. He will move as soon as you will stand up on the ladder and you will go right down. And you are going to, for the backside, a clear intramuscular shot. And if he's not, if he's moving around, you do not shoot. I'm going to be with you. Don't pull back immediately, but careful. If it, was, if it would have been a leopard, you must be very quick to come back. But in this case, quietness, you just watch it. And when you see it's in, it discharged, then you take out. Absolute quietness, and the rest of the people also, absolute quietness. Good morning and welcome to another episode of the COVID Chronicles. Uh, we are here at Okonjima Nature Reserve and behind me is a beautiful, lovely landscape. And uh, in there, if you have a closer look, you might just uh, get to see a giraffe or something passing by behind us. Um, joining me this morning is Dr. Ronan Welt. Uh, welcome, Doc. Thank you. He is the resident vet here at Okonjima. Doc, the job that you do here, what impact does it uh, contribute to conservation? Right, thanks very much, Usko. All right, to quickly summarize, my duties here on the, in the Okonjima Nature Reserve and the Africa Carnival Care Center is to look after the animal health, the care and the well-being of the animals inside the park and also in the, in the care center. Then, secondly, to try and intertwine with the different species-specific research projects of our researchers, biologists within the park and within the care centre. Yeah. And then trying to uh, do a little bit of knowledge transfer, call it education, that's why our, our motto is also um, conservation through education to bring it out. We don't hold it back, but we bring it out into the public. And in that specific case, it's again an intertwining with tourists that come here to look at and want to know a little bit more and to just um, answer their questions. As certainly when um, students come here for either from local or overseas to try and bring them into the projects here. Um, specifically um, veterinary students from our own Namibian veterinary school of veterinary science mm -hmm. to bring them in and get them used to wildlife as part of the bigger agricultural project.
right at the end, stress factor. It's not 100%, but yes, it can. Okay, he was chewing at the at the wire, um, but a little bit damaged here, soft tissue, gingiva. Hold it, hold it, please. Standing in it. Just hold one hand here, yeah. hold the tongue, the face. Okay, those standing in front, I told you why we changed our trapping mechanism, the way, and um, those that I hear. Um, quite often these canines were broken. Quite often the premolar and molar got chipped or broken and they had to be removed. All right. Now he got hold of a piece of okay, let go down again. Of wire, that's why he was pulling. This is where the small little petechial hemorrhages are all over. But the denticure, fine, there's no chip, nothing. Okay? So that just shows you. What is the quality of the mucous membranes. Okay, it is you want to have darkness. Darkness reduces um, the urge to go away and its calming effect. All right, so that is one of the main reasons. Okay, um, the, did anybody palpate already? Yes. All of you? Okay, go. And. Um, uh, Jeremy, you you watch the monitoring here, please. Every now and then, also check the mucous membranes, capillary refill. Did you feel? Did you all go over the whole skin, body? Any lesions? Any thorns? Anything in that line? Nothing. No thorns. Okay. Except the temperature. That. Right. Who's taking blood? Two, please. Okay. Okay. Take blood, please. Just put the needle in, and then we we drip it straight into the cryo vial. Well done. Okay, just carry on holding. I want everybody to to feel with their hands. If you some other reason you haven't got any stethoscope, just take your hand, um, pulse um, at the apex, maximum impact. You can feel it. You can feel the heart, and that's another way that you can also uh, superficially, at least, you feel it. Yeah. Okay. Next one, please. Okay, and if you can't feel it, then you move around from one intercostal to the other. You have to have the point of maximum impact. Mm -hmm. During the trip, if, if they lie down on the bucky, that is what I'm doing. Because you won't be, uh, be able to listen. He's now presently fairly deep, 30 minutes, and I think from about 35 onwards, um, you will find that respiration will go up. 45 minutes, we're going to um, give him, put him back in the in the box, and then give him his antidote. Um, 
Portrait is now 44. 44. It was 48. Okay. The students, very interested, very helpful, very knowledgeable, okay. although practical experience is still missing. I think um, they gel quite, quite good together and putting up um, problems, they had to solve themselves, they had to look after each other. I think that was a very good part. So again, from a collegial or intercollegial um, chat, or discussion that was part of the lecturing process. I think and I'm happy that I had them here for a whole week. Um, probably the best that I have had up so, so far. I think and I do not have any uh, doubt in my mind from then, from now on, they can go and do their own thing to try and get experience in wildlife, part of conservation. Welcome back, we're here at Okonjima. It's a lovely afternoon, it's a little bit cloudy, temperatures are just slightly dropping. And uh, we are here with Kelsey, she is the pangolin researcher um, here at Okonjima Nature Reserve. Um, today we are aiming at finding a pangolin and just re-tagging it. We'll just get word from her later after she tries tracking or how far we are. So uh, we'll go along and see where this pangolin is actually hiding from us. Okay, um, so this is the burrow. somewhere under the ground here. Um, before I can check anything, um, we've got to check that there's no warthogs. Um, they can be pretty dangerous. I usually throw like a rock or something down the hole. It's just big pieces of... Let's see. I'm gonna try and stand behind a bush Just make sure that if there's something in there, it comes out. I think, I think we're safe. The warthog should have come out by now. Um, Saki, do you want to come with me and we'll see what we can find? Um, so with the mortality signal, we could find um, the tag broken off of the pangolin. Um, we could find a dead pangolin or we could find a sleeping pangolin and that means it slept so still for 12 hours it has not moved the tag at all. Um, but because it's been mortality yesterday and again today um, I think that the tag has fallen off the pangolin. So um, usually we Try and check together, <laughs> just in case anything does come out. So this is the time when you definitely don't want a warthog to come out. Um, but it curves. So the tag was coming off from down there and it goes about a meter and a half straight back and then it curves. Um, so I'm gonna have to Maybe go in. All right, let's see if I can see around the corner. Oh yeah, I don't think so. Oh. In there. Okay, it's, um, <laughs> it's way too deep and it gets too narrow to go any further. 
If it's mortality again tomorrow, we might have to excavate the burrow to get the tag back. The penguin has a GPS tag on it, um, so that means that uh, we don't think the penguin is dead because the GPS tag is moving. Um, but right now I can't get a point because um, it's underground. The penguin isn't coming out for maybe a couple of hours. Last night we tried to find this penguin and we didn't find him, but we did find his GPS tag moving. The last point that our GPS tag checked in was at 2 a.m., over 10 kilometers from here. So it's not likely that the tag is on um, because now we still have a mortality signal. Um, when this happens, we want to retrieve the transmitter because they do cost a lot of money, but it's also important for us to see what happened so we can learn what happened and hopefully improve the design or figure out the faults. When we dig into a burrow, obviously the penguin had used this burrow. He could someday use this burrow again, as well as other animals such as porcupine, warthog, aardvark, um, all of those little animals. And so we don't want to do big damage to the burrow. Um, so I can actually locate where under the ground the transmitter is. Um, and then we will only open as little as we can to try and get the transmitter back. Um, so I'm going to scan and see where underground it is. And then we'll start digging um, to see if we can open a hole in the tunnel or the chamber from the top and get it that way because this is obviously too deep and too narrow to fit into. So we were trying to open now, we are trying to set the tag where it is, maybe it's somewhere around, then we are setting it out from here. Oh, there we go. There it is. Okay, alright, so we've got the tag. Yeah, it's really amazing how Okay, all right, so we've got okay. the tag. We got the tag now. Yeah, it's really amazing how precisely we can find a tag. Um, so if you look at the hole, it's, um, it's very small. And we try and do it this way because it's important that we're not um, ruining the burrow. Um, a lot of animals use these burrows. Um, you know, pangolin, aardvark, they don't use the same burrow every night all the time. A lot of other animals use these for refuge, not just um, as safety, but also like a temperature refuge. We finally stopped um, at this location because we got a signal that sounds very close. Um, this pangolin is incredible. It's a beautiful animal. It's scaly. It looks prehistoric. So when we find it, you love to see this one. We'll follow Kelsey and then she'll lead us to where the pangolin is. And uh, from there she will do her thing. And as she does it, we will actually show you everything unfolding. Right, we are <coughs> in this bush now. There's a lot of tall grass, thick bushes. And we are actually looking for this pangolin. The signal is quite good this side, this direction, close to them. So Kelsey just found it under the bush just behind me. So we're gonna go there and see what it's doing.
as you guys have been with me the past week, yeah. you've seen that we've had some problems with tags breaking, antennas breaking. Yeah. So we replaced her transmitter, VHF transmitter, mm -hmm. with a transmitter that has a cable tie over the antenna okay. in hopes to protect the antenna because um, as much refurbishment as we can do, if the antenna breaks, we cannot fix that. So I swapped those tags out and then the GPS UHF transmitter was removed. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, all of those transmitters are coming to the end of their life. Another unfortunate thing from coronavirus, we were supposed to get another batch in April. Yeah. We predicted these tags to go through April and um, now the batteries are dying. So that transmitter, I picked up an alarm on the tag, which means the battery life is over. So I must remove the tag and to get any more data from that, I have to send it back to South Africa for them to extract. So I wanted to remove the tag because I have to um, send a shipment out and it's better if I can get the data off that tag, the sooner the better. And so I left the bolt on there um, because we hopefully have some um, new funding coming through that we can hopefully buy another round of GPS UHF transmitters. Yeah. Um, as I explained to you that day we did the GPS UHF refurbishment, those tags are so important for us because I can get her locations when I'm not following her. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen her in almost a month. Oh, wow. And if her tag's been dead that whole time, mm -hmm. that means I'm not getting any data if the GPS tag is dead. Um, so hopefully we get some more tags and um, yeah, that's what we did with her today. We also took uh, weight and circumference mm -hmm. as part of our regular monitoring. Okay, what was the weight? Uh, well, I didn't do the math yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> she was, she was uh, ten point two seven minus mm -hmm. the sling minus the tag. Yeah, minus the tag. Um, She's just over nine kilos, but uh, I didn't subtract nine, everything okay. yet. It's, it's, okay. it's an average female weight. Okay. A bit on the low side. You were also looking in between the scales and then blowing there. Were you blowing good luck charms <laughs> from predators? Or uh, <laughs> no, what was um, that for? so while well, they're foraging in this thick, dry grass, they get a lot of um, grass seeds stuck under the scales. And what I'm looking for is actually to see if she has any ticks or, yeah. or mites. So I'm looking for parasites. Mm -hmm. Um, if there are parasites, I collect a sample of each kind that I see for our records so we can also have this ongoing kind of view into when do they have parasites and what kinds of parasites that they have. It's pretty clean, um, but usually getting deep into the winter time uh, when it's very cold, they will start to get some parasites. Okay. What is the conservation status? Um, of these pangolins uh, regarding um, IUCN? Well, um, so the, there's, there's a couple different statuses that are important to know about. Mm -hmm. um, the IUCN status for pangolin depends on the specific species. Okay. And it's assessed usually every couple of years mm -hmm. or if there's a drastic reduction in population. For the pangolin that we have here, it's the Temix ground pangolin. Mm -hmm. Uh, Smutsia tamincii, and the status is listed as vulnerable with vulnerable. a decreasing okay. population. There's a big note that in the fact that we don't know populations, but because of trafficking and poaching, um, it's decreasing. Out of the eight species, uh, most are critically endangered or endangered. Yeah. There are just two that are listed as vulnerable, um, but it's also known that we don't know enough to really make much of a statement. As far as um, an important status to know is that they're all protected under the highest level of CITES. Mm -hmm. And CITES is the, the organization that makes regulations on trade. Yeah. And so they're listed as Appendix 1. All pangolin species are Appendix 1, and that's the same level of protection as for rhino or elephant. Um, so it's just as illegal to traffic a pangolin as it is for rhino horn. Yeah. And um, any species given that status is believed to be threatened with extinction in the future because of the trade. 